Well, hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us here today at lunch. Um, people might join us a little bit later, but they can just come in and catch up as we go on. I'm so delighted to welcome you all to our last uh, art break of the semester with the Reverend Dion Carter, who is a first year student at BTS, the Berkeley School of Theology. And we are delighted to have her here today to talk about her art. Uh, and how that's grown and changed and been influenced by and influenced her work here at the GTU. Um, so I think everybody here knows, well, maybe not everybody, about CARE. So that we are the um, Center for the Arts and Religion here at the Graduate Theological Union. Uh, there's two of us here on staff, myself, Lydia Webster, I don't know if I introduced myself yet, <laughs> and uh, Dr. Elizabeth Pena. And uh, we offer courses in arts and religion, uh, events, workshops, grants for students, uh, and also exhibitions. So we've had two exhibitions this semester, one online uh, to adapt to the uh, realities of COVID, and then another one that's a socially distanced exhibition that you can see through the window at the GTU North Building in Berkeley. And both of those will be coming to an end uh, at the end of this month, but they are still available for a few more weeks. So try and catch those before they close. I'll put the uh, information in the chat box. So that's all from me. I'm going to pass it over to Dion, who's going to lead us in um, discussion and uh, just a nice art break to take us out of the whatever we've been doing in our, in our every day and have a, a space where we can talk about art. So thank you so much, Dion. Thank you. So I just wanted to say thank you to Lydia. Um, I'm really excited about being able to talk about art. I am a first year DMAN student at BST and I've been creating art my whole life. Um, it's always been a spiritual discipline for me. Uh, and now I am able to study a lot more about how I can incorporate it into womanist thought um, and also some of the social uh, reform and the activism work that I've done um, has included in art. But now I am able to study, um, learn a bit more, uh, which is actually uh, improving my confidence as well as my inspiring me to get out in the world and, and do more work with my art. And so I wanted to thank you for allowing me this opportunity to share with you all. Um, I am a poet and a storyteller um, among some other forms of art. Um, the picture that you saw is called Revolutionary Soul. And I chose to use that painting and I'll bring it up so you can take a look at it. And thank you for giving me the opportunity for share screen. So uh, this is uh, called Revolution Revolutionary Soul. And I painted it so many years ago. Um, I was just learning to paint. And um, there was a mentor of mine, his name is Malik Seneferu, and he's an artist out of San Francisco. Uh, I always wanted to paint my fist and I reached out to him. And I said, how do I paint my fist? <laughs> And he said, put your fist up and look at it and then paint it. And so as I painted and finished this picture, I began to think about how powerful I am, how much uh, dedication that I have for uh, changing my community and providing opportunities for people to come closer to God and the spirit within them. And so I would like to first begin uh, by introducing myself to you through a poem. Um, this poem is actually something that goes along with uh, this painting. And I'm gonna stop share screen so that I can read this poem for you. Um, I want to give honor to my ancestors who went before me, created all sorts of arts. Uh, before there was words, there were art. And so I wanna give honor to all of my ancestors and my, my parents. Um, who shared art with me during the 80s in East Oakland when there was a crack epidemic and there was a whole bunch of havoc in homes and communities. Um, I was always able to turn to the art to give me peace, to give me an escape. Um, so poetry has always been a spiritual meditation. This poem is called I Am, uh, and I wanted to share it with you because I think it gives a good introduction of who I am. 
<laughs> it's called Revolutionary Soul, I Am. I preach, I teach, I educate, and I speak. I am an East Oakland revolutionary. I confronted the king and the castle with my head held high. Although I stayed on the low for a while, at age 21, it was time to reveal my Black Panther profile. I am the pain, the result of my ancestors' struggles, a light. Torching the flames for a united front, Black folk together as one in this underground railroad. Praying for Harriet's strength and asking God to let her tell us which way we should go. I am the strength of 10,000 angels, been kissed on both cheeks by angels, sending messages from angels, taste the sweetness of my ancestral honey, brown sugar and golden yams I am protected by the spirit of God who revealed my plan. I was born in the right place and at the right time just to be who I am. My resolution, I am my resolution. My calling, my dedication, and my lifelong contributions. I am the voice of our chocolate babies. They seem to be invisible and their pain hides in disguise. I am the tears that nurture those young souls. Like the heartbeat of a shadow, blacker than black, powerful, been bitten by the Lion of Judah, stronger than 911 savages. Still loving my hood as I rise, I lift as I climb. It's no surprise, I am. The black eyes of the world, every kink and every curl, every big hip and every big lip, I am. The microphone's lover caressing it and shouting sweet nothings in his ear. Can you hear? I am from the seeds of the Ramsaya tribe, soft as a touch of a feather. My roots in Africa are known, but my life has shown. The roots have grown. I am D. Nicole's soul, revolutionary soul. So I wanted to share that poem with you. Thank you very much. It it pretty much lays the foundation of uh, the ministry that I believe God has called me to and the art that God has called me to create, that I can send theological messages into the world and spark discussion about issues around race, gender, class, uh, issues of uh, community awareness for health and social disparities. Um, I believe that art is, for me, the way to go. Some uh, issues are very sensitive to talk about, such as murder, such as uh, domestic violence, some of the health and social disparities uh, that chaplains might deal with, pastors might deal with, uh, disciples might deal with. But I do believe that art is a place where a person can commune with God without any interruption based on how they respond to color, form, and sound. So um, I introduced that, and just to let you know, um, I appreciate the opportunity to share with you, and I also appreciate uh, if you all have any questions, to feel free to, to ask them. Um, I will go back to the painting now, and I will give you a short talk about it. Okay, so this painting is called Revolutionary Soul. I painted it in 2003. It was, it has been a, a reminder of me to trust the spirit of God that is within me. Um, it was very simple uh, when I asked him, how do I paint my hand? And he said, just look at it and then you paint it. And what it has uh, reminded me over the course of these years is that whatever I need is already inside of me. And sometimes I just have to stop, take a look at the gifts, take a look at my struggles, take a look at how I've been placed in the world and what I've been called to do, um, and then trust the process versus the outcome. 
to trust the process versus the outcome. There is a poem that goes along with this painting and it is called The Spirit of My Ancestors. And so I would like to read, uh, if, if no one has any questions, I would like to uh, read that poem. Um, and I'm gonna have to stop the share screen because I have the poem up on my screen. All right. So revolutionary soul, I wish I could bring it up, but just imagine it, you just saw it. In the spirit of my ancestors, blood, sweat, and tears, in bondage with no mercy for thousands of years. From sunup to sundown, we weren't allowed to complain, for on the backs of my ancestors remain scars of pain. I can't stand to think my ancestors built this land by the forces of hell and a man with blood on his hands. Shackles and chains, the fire of hell had risen. And when they were called animals, they had no choice but to listen. To the beat of the drum as time stood still, my ancestors were beaten, burned and killed, taken by force by any means necessary. From the light of my ancestors, this torch I must carry. Slavery, I scream, what was it worth on the backs of my people took our babies from birth? Mothers and fathers, families torn apart. I write this in honor of them and their broken hearts. I stand before you in the spirit of my ancestors. They weren't allowed to read. They were given a Bible and told this is your survival. And from their prayers, God planted the seeds. Seeds of strength for my ancestors' plights will be planted in my soul. I will nurture the seeds of my ancestors' pain and their spirits will never grow old. Revolutionary soul. I'm taking a deep breath as I am asking you to take a look at the painting and reflect on the words. And if anything comes up for you, feel free to share. Remain creative. <laughs> I, also, I also see um, that behind that fist, is the sun, which for me represents um, a divine sign of, of, of God's love uh, and nurturing of our land. But I also see tears, what, I can, what I'm viewing is tears falling from the sun, mm. um, meaning that this, this, this divine gift of, of life that the sun provides the land is not without tears. Um, and so then having um, this fist that uh, uh, your beloved brother Malik uh, helped you to paint, um, this fist says that I will persevere. Um, I will persevere in the midst of this gift of life given to us. I'll stop there. Thank you, Dr. V. Thank you, Dr. V. You know, Dion, what I see is the beginning of your strength, which I saw when you were 13 and 14, okay? And um, it's, it's, it's starting to bloom there. And that's what I see in this picture. Thank you, Ms. Henry. My junior high school algebra teacher, and now my professor from the DMIN program, also Malik Senefru. Um, he's the one who said, just look at your fist and paint it, and he's here with us today. I also want to say that years after I painted this, um, I was part of a, an exhibit at a gallery in Berkeley called the 57th Street Gallery. Um, I'm not sure if it's still open, but it was open a while ago. 
and I walk in to see where my painting had been placed. And guess whose painting was right next to mine? It was his, with his fist. And they put our paintings together. They didn't even know we knew each other. It's just a blessing uh, that the art has taken me um, just around the Bay Area. Um, I'd also like to say thank you to uh, Malik because years ago I presented uh, at uh, the Black Infant Health Project. I, I made these little small pin lapels out of clay and I probably made 50 of them and they were laying out and I had been seeing his art around the community but didn't know who he was. And so that particular day, this gentleman walks up and says, did you paint all of these? And I said, yes, I had never painted on canvas. He said, you might want to think about painting on canvas. And I, and, and I just started and I never stopped. And so it's to me a testimony of how art has been my spiritual discipline. Um, it's been a way that I communicate with God and com God communicates with me. Um, I believe that they're sermons. I, I say, I pray with paint. I pray with pens, I pray with pencils. And I do believe that the creator God uh, has made a way for me to travel with my art. Uh, and I believe that it's making a difference in, in the world. I look forward to incorporating art into Bible studies. Um, uh, I'm already using it in spiritual uh, direction. So this picture is about perseverance for me. I had a really hard time growing up um, in that epidemic. Uh, but I was always able to go to art and be empowered. And I pray that that happens for others as well. Wow. Uh, it's great to hear that, uh, sister. And it's good to see your smile, you know, and, and to see how far you've come in your craft. I'm just extremely proud of you. And I'm glad that I could be able to share a word that would help you in any kind of way. Uh, less known being at this point where you're now, you know, sharing in this manner. So I do appreciate you. Uh, everything that you just said is really why I, my mantra is remain creative. And so uh, uh, as a child, a lot of people don't know, as a child, I, uh, I was interested in being a church minister. And uh, so I began actually reading the Bible. I actually read the Bible from cover to cover from age seven uh, about twice I did it from age seven to 12. I read that Bible from cover to cover. And uh, in learning uh, that uh, actually my act of creating art is prayer. And so it's interesting you saying that you said praying is in my paint, but you know, I, I just want you to know that uh, the prayer is action and it's more than words, it's action. The most two greatest things, the most powerful things in the universe is doing and saying. And so uh, what you're doing, you are you're actually exercising the prayers. And so uh, we're gonna we gonna keep on moving. And I'm you know, I'm gonna stop there and say remain creative, sister. <laughs> remain creative. I call him my mellow mentor. Like I sit in the background and I watch the creations, and I'm so inspired by um, the art that I'm learning about, the artists that I'm learning about, and also the the care program. I'm really excited about um, the work that they're doing and, and to learn more about it. Thank you very much. You're always welcome. Good to see you. Good to see you too. You know, what's standing out for me right now is that you don't usually see a woman's hand. So it gives it that feminine part where you've mostly seen just the masculine hand up in that position. Thank you, Mother Essie. Yes. I mean, I was intentional of when I did it to paint the fingernails. I really wanted to make sure that people understood that it was a woman's, a Black woman's fist of power. Um, and then the red, black, and green and the unk symbol. Um, <laughs> it's just jewelry that I like to wear. But yeah. Um, I'm also yeah. learning so much more. Thank you to Dr. V about womanist theology and womanist theoethics and how important it is to use our, our own narratives and tell our own stories. And so now that I'm studying and doing research, 
I'm able to look back over the course of time to realize that I've been operating in this theological framework uh, my whole mm -hmm. life. And now I am mm -hmm. learning the language to be able to articulate it in the theological setting uh, and in the academy. So this is really helpful. Um, woman is here. Here I come. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting uh, that, you know, the concept of the fist and the female uh, being the fist, uh, the, the female fist is now a cultural, it's now a uh, normality. And it's also something that is used a lot in uh, de in designs in, of terms of the woman doing it with the fist, with the fingernails and stuff like that. So you're seeing that now all over and you were the first that I know and I'm, I've studied art my entire life to, to, to take the woman's fist and throw that up. And that's extremely important. You know, when you look all around nature, you'll find mothers caring for their young. And not only that, but they also hold a special position. And so I'm just glad that you are in that position to hold that special position and to hold the space for you being the beautiful woman that you are. And, uh, you know, uh, my wife, Karen Seneferu, she's, uh, you know, created this format of, you know, the black woman is God. And that concept is really us acknowledging that, you know, bl the black woman has been the most unprotected individual in, in America. And, um, you know, par partly because, you know, black men have been worked to been destroyed, but we're in this position now. And I'm so happy and filled with, uh, I I'm, I'm keeping myself contained here. But uh, I just always love seeing you do your do your thing, sis. So big up to you. Big up to you. Thank you. I just wanted to say I thought it was really powerful when you explained that, you know, you asked how to draw how to draw a fist. You learned, you drew it, and then it seemed like that gave you power, having drawn it you know, like it manifested its own power. And so that's just really interesting to think about the connection between that action of drawing and creating and then the realization of the, the power that's in the image, but the power that's also in you. Absolutely. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Every time I have a small picture of this on my desk and sometimes I just go, I just have to go just stare at it just to remind myself of the power that's in within me um, as a black woman dealing with race, class and gender um, in a religious setting, in a community from a low income community that has been underserved. Um, I have to always remind myself that uh, the power is in within me and the power is within us. So um, I did wanna say that Dr. V, those were tears, they were like, supposed to be tears of fire is what I call them. So I'm pretty impressed to see that you notice tears. No one has ever asked me. They just thought the sun was melting, but they were they were supposed to be tears. Amen. Amen. And so with this being one, as you said, one of your early works, um, I know I've had benefit of of seeing um, many more of your pieces, and I don't know if you're if you're planning to show more, but talk to us about uh, the growth from this point and how the 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 empowerment from this piece has translated into some of your other pieces and how the messaging carries through. Absolutely, um, I believe that. This was an early piece and it gave me so much confidence that once I saw I was able to do fingers, it's like I felt like I could accomplish anything. So I began to just paint all kinds of stuff, people, and just kept working on it. And I believe that that confidence has helped me paint things that are in my mind and, and not be afraid to move forward. I can show um, another one, which is, I believe, some uh it was one that i did it's the woman is lord's supper and it came to me in a dream um that i needed to paint this woman is uh the lord's supper with women disciples um it gives you an example of how 
I'm going to bring it up for you now. Um, it gives you an example of how I went from just um, a one figure and my confidence helped me bring in 12 women. 12 women. And I never thought that I would be patient enough. Like when I first started painting, I really wanted to just finish a painting like really quickly so I could say, ooh, look, it's done, right? But now that I understand it as my spiritual discipline, I'm very intentional about taking my time. Um, and I'm starting to paint again. And now I realize that I was rushing. I have so many paintings. I want to go back and add and, you know, but this shows you an example of how that level of confidence actually brought me to painting an image with more than just one person. Um, this image shows of the diversity of Black women um, in a, a variety of interfaith settings, um, all sitting with Yeshua around the table. It's called the after party. And it's called the after party because you know, out there in the world, some people think women weren't called to preach that women weren't called to be disciples. But from the Christian context, when Jesus rose, he went to the women and he told the women to go out and tell. And so they're having a party. If you notice, there's different women, a black nun, you have an Afrocentric, maybe a, a, a traditional black Christian woman in the church. Uh, there's a Yoruba priestess in there. So there's just different reflections. And I'm very proud of this painting. I've painted seven editions of it. Um, and all of the originals have been purchased surprisingly by women preachers. <laughs> yeah. So this one is called The After Party. And if you see that sun is in the background of that painting as well. That gives you an idea of how far I've come. Um, That's a beautiful piece. That's Thank a beautiful you. piece. It's a beautiful piece. I don't know if you heard of the artist by the name of Cynthia St. James. I uh, have. Yeah, Cynthia St. James. She's a very close friend of mine. And uh, uh, when I see you uh, do your thing, I see you and her communicating on a big level. Uh, and, and you taking it from a uh, theater. The, theology, a the, theologian's position is what I want to say. Uh, I think it's really, really important um, for you and in, 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 in understanding of color, you know, uh, color theory and having that foundational connection with color theory. I see you really pulling that together. And so I want to congratulate you for that as well. And your background is starting to lighten up and so, you know, in the concept of color, you know, black and white are not colors at all. They're, they're neutrals. So now that you're adding that color in and, and knowing that the darkest color on your palette can be considered black, you see? And so whatever you consider your black to be, you can choose any of those darkest colors and use them in that manner. And so that's what I've taught, you know, I've, 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 taught art for over 30 years and and um I'm a self-taught artist you guys I've never went to college uh the piece that I'm standing in front of is one of my latest pieces I just signed it last night uh it's of Emmett Till and so uh you know I'm doing I'm working on this project called the Emmett Till project it's a project I've brought together and um so it's really really uh severely important that you just not only do your thing but do it big do those big, those images that will take over the minds of those that will see, because you have a great voice, you have a great mind, of course, but your, your, your visual voice is growing. And as that grows, you want to have that space that you're comfortable with dealing with. Thank you. This yes. space here is helping me become more comfortable. Amen. Amen. I, yeah. Dion, could you put that picture back up and have people talk about what they see in it? Yes, ma'am. Here we go. Uh, yes, yes, yes. This is so great. Thank you, everyone, for being present. <laughs> All right. So here it is. 
Anybody have any thoughts? Well, what I noticed right away, especially um, after Dr. Valerie's comment about the tears, that there there doesn't seem to be tears in this painting. The sun is whole; it isn't dripping. It is there. There isn't any sorrow. It's just a party. And I don't know if that's what you intended, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's amazing how the community is emanating from the sun. Like, you know how people say sunshine? I'm getting the shining that the people are actually the sun rays, that, the, that they are uh, uh, emoting the light of the sun itself. And so uh, I, I feel this energy, the joy and the vibration. I see that you broke through some things in your personal life and you're, you're, you're breaking free through this connection. And I believe, you know, all these individuals you have in are, are, are facets of yourself. That's really what artists, a lot of artists uh, create wow. these things, really they're facets of yourself. And so it's just amazing to uh, see that the purple coming from the back and the front, the foreground, and the lady standing in the background, as that relates to the woman with her hands uh, uh, splattered out uh, side to side and joy and not in crucifixion. So I, I, I totally uh, appreciate uh, this piece. Thank you. Thank you. You know, Dion, when you uh, first emailed me many years ago and said, are you the Miss Henry who blah, 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 we need you on Facebook or whatever. <laughs> and I said to Henry, oh my God, she was always the ringleader. Who you are. You are, and uh, it's such an inspiration to me to see who you're becoming. I just wanted to share that with you. Please, tears to my eyes. Thank you, thank you, Miss Henry. <laughs> yeah, I was the ringleader. <laughs> you were, you were. So, Dion, I'm going to ask the artist in you about this piece. Is there a reason um, so that you can? tell us more about what you see in it. Is there a reason that no one is, that, that you didn't paint eyes? Well, I'll tell you. The reason why I didn't paint eyes is because I couldn't. I didn't think I could do it. And every time I would paint eyes, I felt like they looked like cartoon characters. And so I stayed away from painting eyes for years for that reason. And I got a great feedback when I would take the art out, people would be able to see themselves in the image without having the faces on them. And so I began to appreciate it and realize it wasn't a deficit on my end. It was just where I was um, in my abilities at that particular time and who I needed to reach. Um, now I am not afraid to paint eyes. So I've been painting with eyes, but there's still images that I feel don't need to have faces. So that is the reason. To be honest, I was afraid. And then I realized that these images without faces can be more impactful than the ones with faces. I say, I say. And also, you know, an artist, uh, artist's voice is beyond what uh, what the current reality we're you know we're dealing with. So, whatever voice that comes from you uh, as an artist is extremely important. With eyes or not, it still communicates. What's really important is, you know, often us as artists, we get asked uh, different types of questions. Like I would, uh, people would ask me, you know, are you going to ever paint? You know, uh, you know, when are you going to paint happy things? You know, when you're going to paint, you know, other people? Do you paint other different types of races? And I always ask the question, you know, uh, has anyone ever asked Picasso, will he paint somebody? Does anybody ever, add, has anyone ever asked, you know, other artists, you know, have you, you know, ask uh, Leonardo da Vinci, do, when are you gonna paint black people, that kind of thing. So I think that the expression of the artist is extremely important. And as mm -hmm. we express those, uh, that, that feeling from ourselves is really important for us as artists to be able to express ourselves confidently without being concerned about what others might feel if they see it. So like whatever it is, you know, you have abstract art, you have, you know, art where eyes are everywhere, you know, so you can, you know, whatever comes to your heart is what the creator 
the most beneficent God has actually given to you to do. So you had a mission that the creator has given to you to do, and you did that well in the time that you have with the constraints you were dealing with, you did the right thing. Amen. Amen. And that's why I wanted to hear from you, Dion, your voice as to what you saw each time you were putting a figure into the painting and the reason why. Yes. Yes. I've actually, because of how um, the confidence that I'm starting to have, um, I, I even took up pencils. So I've been doing pencils. Um, Last year, I'm going to take this off. Last year, mm -hmm. uh, year before last, uh, a friend went to the Goodwill and bought me a, a pack of pencils, colored pencils, and brought them to me and said, you said you wanted to try faces, then do it. And I began to draw faces. And when I was done, I had over 250 of them. <laughs> and now I'm going to show you one that I'm very proud of. Um, it is called Yeshua and I was, again, it's something that I didn't think I would be able to do, but trusting in the process, I was able to do it. And there are, like I said, over 250 faces. It's called the Black Face Project and each person has a story. Each person has um, a struggle, a scripture, and a testimony. And I'm planning on using these. I've been using them um, to spark discussion around different topics. Um, I have children, uh, men and women. Um, I have men who are incarcerated. I have children who are living with their grandmothers. And so the art has been taking me into places where I can preach through the art. And the art uh, is in front of everything else. And, and I appreciate it. So as you can see, I went from not being afraid to, to paint faces to painting faces and now drawing them as well. <laughs> and I just couldn't stop. I mean, 250, that's just like pretty compulsive. But I believe that each time I'm practicing and I'm trusting the process even more. And so I'm really excited about what's in store for me as an artist now that I have put both feet on the ground um, and then I've connected with people who are able to encourage me and so I really appreciate this time being with you all um, I know that when I get off here I'm probably going to be crying but it's tears of joy because art is art changes hearts um, I also do they call them paint parties um, but I've been doing, I call them spiritual formation workshops, and I've been doing them now since 2013. Um, people leave my paint parties and they say, whoo, it feels like I just left church because um, I'm preaching the whole time. We're talking about life being a process and how you can fix it when you make a mistake and it might turn out better. Um, but I've been really able to connect with men, men women, children. Um, different faith communities by bringing them together to create art together. And that is what um, my research is going to be about, like measuring the effectiveness of art on um, the ability to provide trauma-informed care, uh, pastoral care, um, and then eventually how that preparing the church, like Dr. V as a change agent, church, then that art and those disciples can move out into the world and use the art to send messages and to, to advocate for policies and, and to get discussions about tough topics happening. Um, I've been seeing a lot of Black Lives Matter art um, and I'm really having I mean, some fortunate that I have to see it whenever there is a, uh, you know, um, 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 with trauma and pain, but I know that is such a sensitive topic that sometimes words can't even describe it. Only feelings can can uh, describe it, the way you feel when you see it. All right. Let me see. I guess I can show something else, huh? <laughs> if you all would like. Yes, uh, please. Yes. I will show you, let's see. 
This one here is called Spirit All Over Me. And I painted this on one of my good days. <laughs> I felt like I was like dancing with the Holy Spirit. Those small white dots represent the Holy Spirit for me. And so in a lot of my paintings, you will see those dots surrounding someone's feet or wrapping around their arms. And, and so this was a painting called Spirit All Over Me. because And you see, she only has one leg. But that's because I couldn't figure out where to put the other leg. But when I put it together and I added the background, I felt like that was what it was supposed to be. And so I appreciate you, Brother Malik, by saying what God, what God gives to you that you paint it and that there's no, I mean, I'm now that I'm learning, you know, back in early centuries, women weren't even allowed to paint. They weren't allowed to study the anatomy of the body so that they could you know, recreate it. And so I think about all the women artists, you know, that were creating art that just, you know, maybe for their own healing or the healing of their communities and that they never were recognized. But this one is spirit all over me. Um, just, just beautiful. And I think the, the, the lack of the second foot, um, lets our imagination soar with the way she might have been leaping so that that foot could have been under her body as she's taking flight or it could have been, you know, uh, uh, out in another direction so that in a photograph, you wouldn't have seen it anyway. But you, you, you don't even think about that until you said that. And as many times as I've seen this picture, I never thought about the second. <laughs> you know, See? It, it was because she was in motion and she's she's taking uh, a leap. And, and for me, the green is all the things in life that surround us and confront us. And she is moving through it. Um, and I love your explanation of the dots because now I see she's moving through it with the spirit being through all of that stuff yes. in our lives. So yes. that, that just gives me joy. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and there's so much energy in your painting. There's a vividness that comes through. It really communicates so much about life. I really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think there might be one more, we're at 1245. I thank you all for spending your lunchtime with me. Um, this one is called, it's actually part of a two part, it's a girl and a boy, I just can't show them both together. Um, it's called Hip Hop to Heaven and so, He's on a pogo stick and she's on a hippity hop that remember the round, the big round bubble with the, with the, so it, it was a set, it was sold. But when I painted this, um, I have a long background in public health and violence prevention. And so these were to represent children who have been killed by guns. Um, and again, you see the spirit around them. So they are hip hop to heaven. And so that's the boy. And then I can also show you the girl. And that is the girl. We still see the boy. You might have to unshare this screen in order to show us the other one. Okay, let's see here. Can you see it now? Yes. Yeah. So that's the girl and the boy. And they were um, sold as a set um, to someone who was very concerned about the number of children who are taking stray bullets in our communities. Um, and I could totally see using this um, in the community as we are building towards some of the uh, protections around gun violence and the prevention and also bringing people to the understanding of the grief and pain that goes behind death. So my actual project is looking at 
mothers of murdered black children and how um, these mothers are in inner city neighborhoods um, across the nation um, in these underserved neighborhoods. And um, I understand that there are lots of things happening in the news about the police killings, um, but I know uh, many mothers, I have been a homicide responder for three years and there's so many mothers who are grieving um, and they don't get acknowledged. Um, and recently, and until recently, they weren't even acknowledged as uh, victims. Um, victims of violent crimes are the people who were shot, not the mothers and the families who are left to pick up the pieces. Right. right. So there are many efforts going on. Um, I'm actually connected with uh, someone, her name is Tanish Hollins, and she's with the crime survivors. Um, right. Yeah, and so she is in support of yeah. this work and saying that there is no space uh, for these mothers. Um, they don't really necessarily get that support at church, um, but she wants me to be able to develop programs, community-based programs in which these mothers can come to the table um, and then we can create art and that art can be used in the community to give a voice to their experiences and their lived experiences of their families, um, which can in turn raise awareness um, on policy implications and things that need to be put in place. And so um, I wanna say the first painting that I saw Malik's painting was a painting, I don't know how long ago he did it, but it was a painting of someone who had got shot. They're laying in the middle of the ground and all these people are standing around them. And it, growing up in Oakland, um, in the 80s and 90s, I lost a lot of friends from gun violence. And so when I saw that painting, I just had to find out. I kept asking everybody, who painted this? Who painted this? And, and I don't know. I don't know. And then somebody said, oh, it's a guy in Bayview. In Bayview Hunters Point, he painted it. And that's who ended up showing up at my table that day. And I asked him for his autograph, didn't I? <laughs> I asked him yes, for his you autograph. Did. I got so <laughs> that, you know, we need to get together. I, you need, uh, I really need to talk to you on a serious note. Uh, I'm a life coach in the city of San Francisco. I wanted to uh, extend a branch to you in doing that work. I don't know what you're doing these days, but uh, we got a lot to get caught up on on that note, right? Absolutely. Uh, that particular piece, you know, I was living up on Harbor Road, uh, Hunters Point, and uh, I was living in a community that was just, you know, it was war, it was war torn uh, at the time. And so the only way that I can really talk to them is by creating a painting that they couldn't argue back at, you know what I mean? And so they would look at it and they were like, wow, man, how'd you get, how this stuff in your head? I said, well, you know, look around you, you know? <laughs> right. So it was that, the, that's a perfect I, example. Yeah, it was the best way I could communicate with folks who did, who were kind of uh, uh, overwhelmed with dogma of people's uh, rhetoric and views being pushed on them. And, uh, and uh, I, so, so we have a lot to get caught up on, but I do want to say that, you should create a series of work. Uh, I don't know if you have, and uh, but if you haven't, you should do a series of work for each of the children who are actually slain. And uh, I would love to work together with you on a project because you know that's that work that you saw. I did th that work in my early twenties, and uh, even when I was a teenager, I started to work to try to build my career out of speaking to my peers to get them to stop killing one another. So. Still to this day, I do that work. I work with youth in Bayview Hunters Point, and I'm also a certified teacher in the city of Oakland and San Francisco, uh, but I broke away from that and became a life coach. And so I would love to sit down and uh, maybe have a, a little lunch or just a, uh, a drink of tea and we can sit down and, and pull something together. That would be great. And, and Sister <laughs> Tanisha Collins, that's my sister. So we definitely got a lot to get caught up on. Yes, yes. And, and that's the reason why, I mean, there's artists that I'm reading a book right now called Sanctifying Art, and it's by Deborah Sokolov. And I'm so happy to read it because 
she's talking about all the different ways that art has been used and misused. Um, she talks about the Reformation and how it split and how, you know, postmodern, we brought it back and how important it is to understand that art is subjective and how, you know, in the art world, somebody might say, oh, the form is not right or, oh, it doesn't match. But in the sanctified art, it just does what it does by the power of spirit. Um, when you stand in front of it and you look at it, it just does what it does. And you don't necessarily need someone to interpret it for you. Um, and that particular piece was very powerful to me. And I do see how that art can be used when words are not good enough. I don't know. I think one of those dead artists said that <laughs> about, about art. Give, I mean, you think about religion. I mean, before there was words, there were pictures. You know, God is a creator. Well, you know, Picasso uh, said something. Uh, he said that, you know, art is not for decoration, right? And so there's a, diff there's a thin line between decorating and actually having something that sanctifies the people that are in. So I always say we're agents of imagination. Imagine that, you know, we're agents of the very act of God. And so, uh, so, you know, we're doing, we're doing the work and I, and I, I applaud you and congratulate you for your work. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, uh, Dion, I also don't want to put you on the spot, but I know <laughs> that I am. Uh, I hope that when we come back from this COVID isolation, um, I'm already thinking, Lydia, about some ideas that we could do when we come back. It would be wonderful to use the gallery as a site or even the student commons out in front of the gallery so that we don't mess up Lydia's floors to have one of your uh, paint gatherings so that you can guide us uh, and have it be a time of, of spiritual sharing and and, and us benefiting from your theological gifts and helping to guide us with the paintbrush. Um, and that would be a wonderful uh, noontime activity. Yes. Yeah, you took great. the words right out of my mouth, uh, Dr. Valerie. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, Dion, you're gonna have a lot of people wanting to pick your brain, I think, after <laughs> today. It would be my pleasure, yes. I actually have done one at Imani Community Church. Um, we did it on Genesis, the creation story. And I played, um, I think it might have been, uh, who did the creation story? Um, well, God, but you know, who did the, <laughs> there, uh, it was a, a poetic, a po Langston, it was it Langston? Are you talking about uh, Ovid? the uh, gospel of uh, Jesus, uh, the, the Aquarian gospel? No, it okay. was, it was, um, well, anyway, I played the, the reading of, of Genesis while they were create, while they were painting. Oh, Langston, then, Hughes. Langston Hughes. Yeah, Langston Hughes. It was Langston Hughes rendition of the Genesis, thank you, creation story. And so it was interesting because they all, they painted, either a person holding the world or standing on top of the world, right? But when we were done, I do what's called a divine download and people are able to share what came up for them when they were painting. And it was interesting to hear people say, you know, I thought about my brother who died, right? And i am just been really missing him a lot. And I mean, just while they're in the, in the process of creating, the spirit is speaking to their hearts. And so I usually will encourage people to have a notebook next to them. Um, that way they can write down whatever comes up for them. And then when we have our divine download, we dig off a little bit deeper into it. It will be wonderful if I could do that. I did an installation when I was getting my MDiv at PSR. It was called Suffering and Hope. And it was like this bloodstained veil and people were going inside and I couldn't believe they were actually using it. They're going inside and they're praying with the oil. And I dipped like, I don't know, 150 nails in the paint, in red paint on the tips and they would take it. And so I know that for me, I'm, I learn with my hands, I learn with my eyes and so do other people. And so if there's any way for us to collaborate and make that available and raise awareness about that, 
that would be great. Dr. Flesher also asked me if I would be willing to set up an exhibit in the new hallway. I don't know where that is, but there's a new hallway somewhere around that BSD. So, you know, I just really, thank you very much. I just, I mean, I'm, one day, who knows? I might, you know, I, I've been looking at all these illustrated Bibles and, you know, I'm wondering about new types of Sunday school materials or spiritual education materials that, you know, that allow people to be childlike, to, to allow people to be more creative, right? I'm a youth pastor and people think that art is just for children, crayons, color crayons, you know, while church is going on, give them some color crayons, right? But our children are coming back as little theologians now. Like they understand things deeper than the adults and they can't understand why. But it's because I use art in their worship. They create things that reflect what they're learning. Then they, then they really embody the word um, by creating paintings and, 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 and things. So I'm excited about my future in ministry with the art. Um, I, I, I see, you know, I may not be a hoop and holler and preacher, right? But I definitely can put a painting in front of your face and say, what do you think about it? Let's talk about it. Let's process this, right? Oh, this is absolutely beautiful. I can't wait. I want to be there when you do it too. I want to be there in the process. Because, you yeah. know, uh, this is an amazing church called the St. John Coltrane Church. Yes. And, you know, I, I, I was there at its inception. Uh, people like Jean-Michel Basquiat came to visit the church in San Francisco. And so, you know, uh, you, you, you're right on point to where, uh, where we need to be. That's, I mean, the question is, what did you do in the end, right? Not, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Right, right. And John Coltrane, that's on, is that still on Fillmore Street in San Francisco? Uh, it's at St. Cyprian's, St. Cyprian's uh, Church, uh, right up at the top of Turk. Mm -hmm. And so um, the artist who did the artwork uh, for that, I helped him to uh, create the uh, mural for uh, St. Gregory's, uh, which is off of uh, the Harrow. You, you did? I Okay, yeah. when, when I was a chaplain, my um at just San Francisco General yes my supervisor knew that I'm like was art crazy and I didn't really I hadn't not made the connection yet so uh, okay. she took me to that church and yes. I'm telling you I'm a crybaby I stood <laughs> there and I just looked up in the you know I felt like I was looking into heaven right yeah. but that was the idea to give you that feeling <laughs> yep yeah yeah so I'm glad you saw it then <laughs> yes. And I'm thinking about more about the possibility of me learning iconography and, and some of those types of forms of art. Um, well, you I'm already iconography. You're already doing it. You know, iconography is really based upon the guilders at the time, the old guilders where they would learn how to do this, uh, this gold leafing. And that you can learn that today on YouTube. But, you know, uh, the idea of gold leafing, you know, is really what uh, the technique and how they did the garments, you know, so you can get a get a chance to see the um, the different uh, levels as it began to grow. But you know, you go all the way back to the the, the Pentateuch and uh, the many others, the Tanakh. Uh, you you can uh, you see the art uh, done in Ethiopia, where I met a lot of the artists when I was in Africa. You know, you could just you know it just really your vibration, as you said what comes to you will come through you. And so I just say, just keep doing what you're doing. And like I said, if you're interested, there's so many ways to learn about that, but really it's about learning how to paint folds and making the divinity and those things like that. Yes. But we'll talk more about it. I don't want to- I will be in contact. I'm trying to talk too much, excuse me. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Dion, for a really rich and incredible lunchtime. I think we all, you know, have so much to take away from this in our personal lives, in our spiritual lives, in our artistic lives. And I definitely can't wait to see what we're going to do next, because <laughs> you'll be hearing from me. And I'm looking forward to a fruitful partnership with CARE 
and you in the future. So thank you so much. And thanks to everybody who joined us on Zoom, uh, who gave up your lunch time to have an art break with care. Um, hey, can I say one more thing? Oh, please. Yes, please. I didn't, I didn't know that Kiana was on here, even though she's not on screen. I just want to thank Kiana because Kiana, I met Kiana as I came into the program and I, she found out I was an artist. And as a sister, she made sure that I was connected with Lydia. And so I, I believe that she made this possible. So thank you, Kiana, very much for the opportunity. Yes, thank you, Kiana, for that. All right. Okay, well, have a great rest of your day, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Have a great day. Right. Bye. Remain creative. Yeah. Remain creative. I'll be in touch. Bye. <laughs>